Media stations in Nigeria have been challenged to ensure gender consideration in their reportage for increased women participation in the forthcoming general election. A call is coming on the heels of a report conducted in the country early this year, uh, which places men to women's voices ratio to eight against one. The report also revealed that in Nigeria, men are 25% ahead of women in consuming news online, a gap which the report said can be closed by 1% in the next five years by engaging more women. The report also shows that locking women out of all elements of news in Nigeria amounts to the media playing an adverse role during the general election and failing to offer fair access to women and issues that affect them. Now, to cover this missing perspective, it recommends raising of awareness within newsrooms and sensitizing journalists to look for gender angles in their reportage to reflect women's voices in the news as voters, experts, and news contributors. Now, for more on this shortfall in participation of women in politics and other endeavors of life, let's bring in a journalist, Luba Kasova, who joins us live via Zoom from London, UK. Good to have you join us. Lovely to be. Thank you for having me, Precious. All right, so we would usually count how many female candidates we have um, in each election cycle to measure progress. But you have brought a different and very interesting perspective to this conversation. What do you think we're missing in terms of amplifying women's voices in this election? Um, that's a really, really good question. And I really appreciate that there are, um, that women candidates in politics are minority. So we need to, to bear this in mind. But what's happening in news is that women are essentially locked out, and not just in Nigeria, but, uh, but all around the world to some degree, and in Nigeria to a greater degree, they're locked out from the uh, whole news value chain. So uh, from news leadership, they're ba barely um, uh, news leaders, in particularly in high-profile beats like, like politics and economics and editors-in-chief. But they're also excluded from coverage as contributors, sources, or experts. As you rightly mentioned, the ratio of men to women at the moment is 8 to 1 in times of election, and last year it was 5 to 1. So we're seeing during the election campaign period that ratio are getting worse for women. Uh, mm -hmm. They're also excluded from the storytelling as protagonists. So they're rarely, uh, the storytelling is rarely centered around the issues that women face and, and the motivations that they have for, to vote one way or another. Uh, um, and, and how the um, volatile economic situation affects women who, are, who have jobs, but also more than half or around half the, uh, of women are not in employment. So how does this affect them? So these stories that zone in on women are essentially missing. Mm -hmm. And by not focusing on women uh, and, and not allowing women to take the editorial decisions, of who or what constitutes a story, essentially women become peripheral in, in, um, in uh, a societal life, and that leads to their further marginalization in news, uh, in uh, politics. Mm. Uh, and you, you mentioned um, um, different ratio of, of men to women, but I, I just want to quote one of them you have in your piece. And it's, you mentioned that women constitute one in six political editors in Nigeria. Now, the long-term solution would be perhaps giving women equal opportunities um, in news media leadership. But what do you consider the short-term approach um, ahead of this election? Yes, no, you're very right. And there is one thing I want to say where Nigeria is actually doing better than the other comparative countries, even some like UK. In uh, Typically, women, a representation of women in politics is slightly better in, in countries uh, like the UK than it is in news editorial um, leadership. But in Nigeria, while 4% of women are uh, members of the Senate and 10% members of government, uh, uh, actually the um, editors in politics enough. And the fact that um, there is one in six uh, women take decisions about what stories to run mean that they, uh, their voices often are not heard around the table, 
uh, because they're not part of the old boys club. And that's the problem of it, around uh, the world. So in the short term, what, uh, what you can do, uh, uh, in terms of reporting, it's really important just to consider women as the target audience in the election. After all, there, I read that, and forgive me if I'm quoting the wrong numbers, but around 47.5% of voters are women. So zoning in on their concerns on why and how they're likely to vote is really important. And we know that women are less likely to uh, be, um, to agree to be interviewed. So doing the work, um, either as experts or sources, doing the work by giving them more time to prepare for interviews, by giving them the opportunity to find um, child care, because often they're the primary child care uh, uh, givers and they need to arrange this, and convincing them that their voice matters. And uh, even though they're likely to relegate it to their male count counterparts, and that happens all around the world to a greater or lesser extent, it's uh, convincing them that their voice matters and really doing as much reportage, as you said, focusing mm. on women in these critical times. Something that's been done just by... To, by um, uh, just, just allow me, because you're making a very critical point. Um, on, on how we, we, can, we can engage women more, especially through rap, reportage. But where we are now is the fact that we have more men in the newsroom than we have women. So is there a way to get the men on board? And then do, do, do more women in the news media necessarily translate to giving equal access to female political candidates? Uh, yes, so uh, taking your first part of the question, um, the way to get men on board, there are, what we found is that journalists across the board around the world, they're very driven by being fair and they're also very driven by unearthing the truth. They also don't like to have missed the story. So that's one way of getting them on board. But another more pragmatic way of getting them on board is the economic argument, the business argument, which states that if more we, if the gap which you mentioned at the beginning uh, uh, of the package um, of which is 25% uh, more men consume news than women, if that gap were to be, to be closed by one percentage point in the next five years and by 10 percentage po points in the next 10 years, then this is 10 million US dollars up for grabs for the news industry in Nigeria in, in the five year, year run and, and 32 million in, in 10 years. So, so this is not a negligible uh, argument um, uh, to make uh, for, for them to get engaged. And also the, the argument that was made before I came on the news, which is mm. women, uh, when women come to power, there is academic research that suggests that the, the policies that they take are much, much more likely. Mm, absolutely. Um, I mean, we've we uh, had a, a lot of reports in, in, in that regard, and I'm hoping that, you know, um, those who, especially the media in Nigeria, will take um, a look at this report and beginning to, begin to re-strategize on getting more women in, in the newsroom so we can report more women issues. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, Luba Kasova, your piece is titled, I just want to get the title of your piece, Women in Politics and Access to Media in Nigeria is on the um, TVC News website, tvcnews.tv. Thank you for talking to us.